praying to silence. Silence is the new Martin Scorsese movie, stars Andrew Garfield, Kylo Ren, I mean Adam Driver. And it's the two of them going to Japan, they're Jesuit priests, they're, they're on a mission trip to go find Father Ferreira, Liam Neeson, who was already there. And you know, there's the Japanese Buddhists, they don't like Christians, so there's all kinds of prosecution going on. So the movie's been out for a couple weeks now. The first thing I'm gonna do is review it like normal, and then I'm gonna talk spoilers, because there's a lot of important stuff in here that I absolutely have to mention. And it's not like I'm ruining some surprise reveal twist ending or anything, but there's... There's stuff in, like, really, like, I, I urge you, unless you really want to go in absolutely blind, I urge you to stay for the spoiler section, because there's something I have to say. Because I think the average moviegoer is gonna see the movie and think the wrong thing. Don't worry, I'll give the score and I'll warn you first. And yes, Silence is a faith-driven movie. There are some people who say the movie doesn't take sides. The movie shows you the Buddhists and the Christians, and the movie lets you decide, blah blah blah. And I'm like, what movie did you watch where the Buddhists weren't the ones torturing and murdering Christians for their faith, and the Christians weren't the ones risking their lives and willingly dying to save others and the religion? Yeah, okay, doesn't take sides. The strongest aspects of silence are the acting and the production and the faith aspect, for sure. That thematic stuff is more than just like a little tacked on extra thing. That is kind of the heart of the movie. Adam Driver's in it for a little bit at the beginning. Liam Neeson has like two scenes at the end, but make no mistake, this is the Andrew Garfield show. The movie's very realistic and the movie's very gritty. Like, oh, like, award for muddiest movie goes to silence, for sure. There's so much mud, it's like, take a shower, ugh. But I wouldn't call it intense, despite the fact that, you know, people are getting tortured and executed. It, the fact that there's no music for like 95% of the movie makes it seem awfully and kind of quiet and slow. And it goes for that somber kind of realistic approach than uh, focusing on making like an intense, thrilling movie. And I'm not gonna lie, it makes the movie feel really really slow, which is highly unusual for Martin Scorsese because both Wolf of Wall Street and The Departed were nearly three hour movies that moved at breakneck paces. But the movie gets into this cycle of like apostatize or we'll kill you, apostatize or we'll kill you, apostatize meaning trample on an image of Jesus, prove that you're not a Christian or we'll execute you. That is where the essential ethical conundrum comes from the movie. Is it worth risking for your own life or others? Sometimes it's not just you. It's like, hey, trample that image of Jesus and spit on that cross and say the Virgin Mary is a whore or we're gonna execute this entire village. And, ew, that is not a pleasant scenario to be in. And that I think is the most powerful and effective and discussion inducing aspect of the movie. And I think it is done incredibly well. The movie deals with themes like forgiveness after a repeated offense. You know, that part in the Bible, it's like, I will forgive you 70 times, seven times. The perseverance of the human spirit under intense and horrible suffering. And the movie's title comes from the idea that it seems like God never answers prayers. That is something that everybody can relate to. And because that faith aspect of the movie is dealt with so well, I found myself going out and recommending this to all my other Christian friends, even though I would never watch it again because it is three hours long and it did not need to be. Definitely take a shot of caffeine before you see the movie. However, I think the biggest issue with this movie is the fact that mainstream audiences and Christians who just don't study their faith all that well are gonna take the wrong thing out of the ending. And I want to correct you, I want to stop you, I want to make sure you don't make that mistake. It's kind of the movie's fault because it is so subtle, but still, we're gonna talk spoilers now, so. I'm gonna give Silence a 7 out of 10. You have been warned. Alright, so the main idea of the movie is that martyrdom is good. You know, die for your faith, be prosecuted for the faith. It's considered by God like the most highest, most selfless act you can do. And I think the question is, do you apostatize, which is, you know, step on the image of Jesus, in these intense circumstances? I think the answer to that is no. I think regardless of the circumstances, it is always no. Now, when it's just you, it's pretty simple. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe that he descended, took on human form, died for our sins, and was resurrected from the dead. Those are the core bare essentials of the Christian faith, and you should be willing to die for that. I'm not saying it'd be easy, and I'm not saying I would be able to do it, but that is what you bubble in on a test, and that is the correct answer. Now, when it becomes an ethical conundrum is when it's not just you who's being threatened, when it's others. It's like, oh, do I not have, like, a duty as a good Christian to, like, help do unto others, help those around me, to apostatize the faith? Oh, they said it's just a formality. They said it doesn't have to mean anything to save these people suffering and torment. And the answer is a pretty strong no. Now, Andrew Garfield, because he's either too weak-spirited or because he can't handle it, you can see he's got tears in his eyes, he's like, trample, trample, it is okay to trample. Because Andrew Garfield just doesn't want to see these people die. And then Adam Driver responds immediately, he's like, how can you say that? 
Adam Driver is the one who got it right. God simplified the commandments to two, and love your neighbor as yourself came second after you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. All your heart, soul, and mind. So when you apostatize, I really hope I'm not like saying that incorrectly, to save other people, you are putting human beings above God, and you are putting earthly life above eternal life. And I think from the ending of the movie, the average person is going to get the total opposite. Because, you know, there's the voices like Andrew Garfield is struggling, people are being tortured. And Liam Neeson's all like, JUST DO IT! And he hears this voice, and it shows on screen an image of Jesus. And the voice is like, trample on me, trample on me. It's okay to trample on me. I feel your pain. I've been with you this whole time. It's okay. Trample. Something along those lines. And then Andrew Garfield does step on the image in, like, super slow motion. And then, apparently... A cock crow. And I gotta be honest, I, I missed it. I wouldn't have known that if Bishop Barron in his video didn't mention this. So I'm gonna send you to two other videos when you're done watching mine. I'm gonna put them in the description. Bishop Barron did a video and the Marian Catechist. And the mainstream audience is gonna think that voice is Jesus. And I think that voice is quite clearly not Jesus. First and foremost because that voice is condoning sin. That voice is saying, disgrace the image of God. And Jesus cannot do that. It is against his very nature. Especially because the cock crowed, you know, when Peter denied Jesus Christ three times, the symbol of betrayal. So that voice is either A, the devil, which I think we want to be careful about, because I hear a lot of people's like, oh, I'm being, the devil is tempting me to sin. It's like, alright, don't equate the devil with God. The devil is not omniscient, the devil is not omnipresent, okay? He's bad and he's got power, but do not put him on the same level as God. He is not a reverse God. He is a fallen angel. And I think sometimes Christians give too much power to Satan. I think the more likely answer is that it's just the voice in his head. It's his own voice that he kind of took to be Jesus, which I also relate to really well. How many times do you, like, think of an idea and, like, think it comes from God? It's like, well, God doesn't talk to me through ears and sounds, so I gotta assume he's talking to me in my mind. And eventually you're like, oh, that wasn't what God wanted. That was what I wanted. Aww. And I think that is another fantastic lesson from the movie to be learned, is don't always assume the voice in your head, your conscience, is God speaking to you, because you could be wrong. And that voice in the movie was definitely wrong. Andrew Garfield should have let those people die. And the average person in a secular culture just can't accept that. That sounds evil to them. They can't fathom, they can't understand this sense of there is something more important than earthly life. And they think that sounds just very unchristian because they don't understand what Christianity really is. Now in any other situation, I think you are obliged to help. If somebody is drowning nearby, you have a duty to try to rescue them. And I'd say if you don't rescue them, you are sinning. But when you add in the defiling of God's name to that, it becomes a completely different scenario. And you gotta remember in the movie, it's like, Andrew Garfield, you're just gonna let those people die. It's like, no, yes, he's letting them die. He's not actively killing them. It's like, I am not the one sinning here. You Japanese asshole Buddhist sons of bitches, language, are the ones torturing and killing people. I am not gonna take credit for you doing this evil. I am not gonna take the blame. You are the ones killing these people, not me. Now, I'm not saying Andrew Garfield's character is like going to hell for what he did, but it was wrong. It was sin. And I think he knows that. By the end of the movie, he is in such shame for what he did that he can't even return home. That he stays in Japan, takes a Japanese name, takes a Japanese wife, and essentially helps them find Christian artifacts. I don't think that was, oh, he switched to the Buddhist side. Because you look at him, it looks like he wants to kill himself. I think that is him finally giving up. I think that's what that is. I think that is him saying, I am ashamed for what I have done. I have failed. And he just stops resisting the Japanese influence. I think that's what that is. I don't think he's switching sides. I just think he's a very broken, tortured man who lost the will to do anything else. One thing I didn't get in the movie was in the prison when that one guy got his head chopped off because he wouldn't apostatize. That is the time, even after Andrew Garfield has seen people like die slowly due to water exposure on the crucifix for days and people getting killed in these other horrible ways and drowning and everything. That's the one that put him over the edge and made him lose it. I mean, maybe he was just sick of seeing people dying or something, but like we've established that like essentially the goal should be to get martyred, right? That's best case scenario. Leave the world, go to heaven because it's paradise. And that's what happened with that guy. He got martyred for the faith and also had the bonus of not suffering because he had, was just, he was a super clean decapitation. And I'm like, that's the luckiest guy in the whole movie. But Andrew Garfield was like, no, stop. And I'm like, eh. I am going to put up a poll though because I am curious what your stance is on religion. I kind of want to just like get a little pie chart of like Catholics, Protestants, atheists, agnostics. Agnostic being atheist but not an asshole. Or hey, maybe some of you are Hindus. I don't know, I'm just curious. And please, if you've seen the movie, 
comment, like, I, more so than, like, on a game review or something, this is something I want to discuss. Please tell me your thoughts, because this is a very important, very relatable, very relevant topic. So those are my thoughts anyway. Good talk, guys. Good talk.